Good day viewers, this is 300 plus academy where all we do is exams tutoring, ensuring that you ace your next exam still uh, on the subject chemistry, looking at uh, gas laws. We'll be looking at Dalton's law of partial pressures uh, today. Um, when we say Dalton's law of partial pressure, it talks about having mixtures of gases that do not react chemically together so if we have mixtures of gases here that do not react chemically together remember that the gases in here they are going to bombard the walls of the containing vessel constituting what we call uh vapor pressure in this place uh, we can say gas pressure so if we have a mixture of gases that do not react chemically together then the total pressure we are going to have in here is the pressure of the individual gases is the partial pressure of the individual gases. Take for example, imagine that the total pressure here is 100 atmosphere, okay? Then the 100 atmosphere pressure in this uh, containing vessel is going to be the pressure of nitrogen plus the pressure of helium plus the pressure of sulfur peroxide plus the pressure of uh, neon. The pressure of the individual gases is what we call partial pressure. So the total pressure here is the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases so the partial pressure constitutes the total pressure and that's what you have here the Alton's law of partial pressure states that if we have a mixture of gases which do not react chemically together then the total pressure exerted by this mixture like we have here is the sum of the partial pressure of the individual gases so what that means is that when I talk about recall, recall that we've said PV equals to NRT according to ideal gas equation. In this regard, pressure is NRT over V. What that means here is that the pressure of nitrogen is going to be number of moles of nitrogen RT over V. That of helium is going to be number of moles of helium rt over v and then uh here is going to be number of moles of sulfur peroxide rt over v number of moles of uh, neon rt over v equals to the p uh t that is the total pressure now when you look at all of this this r is the universal gas constant the temperature is the temperature of the system and then the volume is the volume of these containing vessels so when you look at what is common to all of these individual gases from uh, hydrogen to uh, neon here you see that rt over v is common so what that means is that number of moles of nitrogen plus number of moles of helium plus number of moles of sulfur peroxide plus number of moles of neon you know when we take the number of moles factorizing uh, RT over V equals to the total pressure. And the total pressure here talks about the total number of moles NT RT over V. So when we look at what we have on the left-hand side and what we have on the right-hand side, this, this just goes out so that number of moles of nitrogen plus number of moles of helium plus number of moles of sulfur peroxide plus number of moles of neon equals to the total number of moles. Uh, that is what this means. But the important thing here, first of all, is that the total pressure that we have here is a function of the number of moles of gas. And the total pressure in this uh, containing vessel is the sum of the partial pressure of the individual gases. Uh, so moving on, uh, that talks about our total pressure. Not to forget, this is your ideal gas equation, PV equals to NRT, and therefore pressure equals to NRT over V. Okay, so since the gases that we have here behaves independently, the mixture of gases we have, they behave independently. Uh, if I talk about gas 1, let me pick gas 1 here. P1 is going to be number of moles of gas 1, RT over V. When we talk about the total pressure here, that's going to be PT equals to total number of moles RT over V. 
Now, let's imagine that what we want to do here is we want to compare the partial pressure of gas one to the total pressure, and I say P1 over PT. P1 over PT, P1 represents N1 RT over V, and um, PT represents NT RT over V. This and this the same. So when you look at this, this and this the same. So this, this out. So what it means is that the partial pressure of a gas divided by the total pressure of a gas equals to the number of moles of that gas in that containing vessel divided by the total uh, uh, number of moles. So in this case, you're looking at what we call, uh, let's say I'm asked to calculate the partial pressure of a gas. And that's what I mean by partial pressure. If I'm told to calculate the partial pressure of a gas, it means the PT will need to move here. So that what I'm going to have is P1 equals to N1 over NT times PT. So what this means is that if I know the total pressure and I know the number of moles of a particular gas and I know the total number of moles in the containing vessel, then I can calculate the partial pressure of the gas. The implication of this is that if I know the total pressure, I can say, okay, partial pressure of gas 2 equals to what is the number of moles of gas 2 divided by the number of moles of the total gas times the uh, total pressure. That way, I'll get the partial pressure of gas 2. So this is a way of calculating partial pressure. So when you look at N1 over NT, N2 over NT, that is talking about the number of moles of the individual uh, gases divided by the total number of moles so that when you're looking at this you're talking about mole fraction mole fraction you're you're looking at the number of moles of a gas as compared to the total mole what is the number of moles of a gas out of the total moles here so that's what we call mole fraction let our mole fraction be represented by what x x x so that when i look at let's say partial pressure of gas 2 now partial pressure of gas 2 is actually what is the mole fraction of the uh, second gas here times the total pressure and i'll be correct if i'm talking about gas 1 here the first gas here i can say n1 over nt here means the partial pressure of gas 1 equals to what is the mole fraction of gas 1 x1 x1 times the total pressure and that way i can always calculate the partial pressure of uh, gas one so that's what we mean by saying partial pressures and then mole fraction in a case whereby we are not given volume uh, we are not given the number of moles of a gas we talk of what we call let me put that here we talk of what we call volume fraction we talk of what we call volume fraction if i am given the volume of a gas i can calculate the partial pressure of that gas let's say p uh, uh one in this case let's say p1 p1 is going to mean what is the volume of that gas one divided by the total volume times the uh total pressure so in a case where i am talking volume then i can just uh if it's volume i'm given and they are not talking in terms of the number of moles of gases here, I can use volume fraction times uh, the total pressure. That way, I'll be able to calculate the partial pressure. So what that means is that if I'm talking of gas 2, if I know the volume, if I'm going to calculate the partial pressure of gas 2, if I know the volume of gas 2, V2, divided by the total volume times the total pressure, I can use this to calculate uh, the partial pressure of gas 2. So this is what partial pressure uh, more fraction and as well what we call volume uh, fraction is all about so with this the next thing to do is to take questions that relates to Dalton's law of partial pressures uh taking the first question uh we have in a mixture of 16 gram of oxygen okay let this be the uh, vessel where i have the mixture in a mixture of 16 gram of oxygen, so it means I have oxygen here and the oxygen is 16 gram and uh, four moles of nitrogen, I have nitrogen and the nitrogen is uh, 
four moles, okay? And then I have 71 gram of chlorine gas. Let this be chlorine gas, 71 uh, gram. We were told to look for, okay, we've been given the total pressure. We were told to look for the partial pressure of nitrogen. We're looking for the partial pressure of nitrogen. That's the question. When the total pressure is 110 uh, atmosphere okay now uh, the first thing to do is to get this to mole so this is going to be 16 over 32 using mass over molar mass oxygen is 16 16 times 2 is 32 so this gives us 0 0.5 mole and then this is 4 moles and then uh, this is a uh, chlorine that is 71 Chlorine, that's Cl2, 35.5 times 2, that gives us 71. Uh, therefore, we have one mole here. Okay, if we add this together, this is going to give us 5.5 moles. That is our NT, total number of moles. So, when I'm told to look for the partial pressure of nitrogen, the partial pressure of nitrogen here is going to be, what is the number of moles of that nitrogen? divided by the total number of moles times the total pressure. Recall that we talked about mole fraction just now. So what is the mole fraction of nitrogen times the total pressure? That is how I'm going to get the partial pressure of nitrogen. So the partial pressure of nitrogen here is, what's the number of moles of nitrogen uh, for out of 5.5 times 110 atmos? So it means that the partial pressure of nitrogen here is going to be 80 atmosphere. So uh, that is the weight. This is the main formula. If you're looking for the partial pressure of a gas, it is going to be the uh, mole ratio of that gas. Talking about the number of moles of that gas divided by the total number of moles you have in that vessel times uh, the total pressure that way you'll be able to get the partial pressure of the nitrogen gas so which means that for example here if i was told to look for uh, the partial pressure of chlorine partial pressure of chlorine would have been what is the number of moles of chlorine one out of 5.5 times 110 atmosphere this would have given us uh 20 atmos sphere and will be correct so that ends question one moving on to, moving on to question two 10 cm cube of oxygen was mixed with 12 cm cube of co to form co2 okay so this is more like okay uh we have um oxygen and then we have co in this case we were told uh, this is 10 cm cube and then this is uh uh the co was 12 cm cube to form co2 Calculate the partial pressure of CO in the resulting mixture. We're told to look for the partial pressure of CO in the resulting mixture if the total pressure was 8 millimeter mercury. Okay, this is talking about volume, and I recall talking about volume fraction. If I'm looking for the partial pressure of carbon 2 oxide, that is going to be what is the num uh, volume of carbon 2 oxide divided by the total volume I have here times the total. Uh, pressure that is when I am dealing volume. So the volume of CO here is 12 cm cube divided by 22 cm cube because 10 plus 12 that's 22 and the total pressure is 8 millimeter mercury. So this this off so 12 times 8 divided by 22. So this is going to give us 4.36 millimeter mercury that is the partial pressure of the carbon 2 oxide in this uh mixture here okay moving on to the third question Moving on to the third question, 7 gram of nitrogen gas and 3.4 gram of ammonia gas together exert the pressure of this, okay? You're looking at, okay, let this be my vessel. I just like to uh, use vessel to represent this. Um, 7 gram of nitrogen gas, so which means I have nitrogen here, and you're looking at 7 gram of uh, nitrogen gas and 3.4 gram of ammonia gas, NH3, uh, 3.4 gram 
of ammonia gas together exert a pressure of 1 times 10 raised to the power 3 Newton per meter squared. The total pressure here is 1 times 10 raised to the power 3 Newton per meter squared. Invariably, this is 1,000 Newton per meter squared at a constant temperature. Calculate the partial pressure of ammonia in the mixture. We're looking for the partial pressure of ammonia here. Of course, this is something very easy. I'm dealing in mass here, so the best is to convert to mole. This will be 7. Nitrogen, okay, at the end of the question, we should have been given nitrogen is 14, and uh, hydrogen is 1. In this case, nitrogen exists as N2, so 14 times 2, this is 28. 7 over 28 should give us 0 0.25 mole, okay? And uh, this is ammonia. This should be 3.4 gram divided by NH3 is uh, 17. 3.4 divided by 17, that is going to give us 0 0.2 mole. 0 0.25 plus 0, that's 0 0.45 mole. That is the total number of moles that we have here. So if I'm looking for the partial pressure of ammonia, the partial pressure of ammonia here is going to be what is the number of moles of ammonia divided by the number of moles of, uh, uh, that's the total number of moles, NT. This is my NT here. Times what is the total pressure, PT. In this case, uh, the number of moles of my ammonia is 0 0.2 divided by the total is 0 0.45 times PT is 1,000 Newton uh, per meter square. So that what I have here is 444.44 millimeter, sorry, atmosphere. That is the partial pressure of, that is the partial pressure of Amo, Ammonia here, 444. So that ends question three. And with that, we've come to the end of this lecture. Do not forget, this is 300 plus academy. You need to ace your next exam. This is the channel to be. Hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and do share with your peers. They'll be glad you did that for them. From myself here, it's bye for now.